Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we'll cover two previous year JE problems from thermodynamics. So this problem is from JE 2019. This problem is from JE 2020. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a problem which is similar to this problem over here as homework. Okay, we'll begin with this question. So this problem originally came in IPHO 1996. So the problem states, we have a current carrying wire that heats a metal rod. The wire provides a constant power P. So let's say this is a metal rod over here. So electrical power is being supplied to it at a constant rate of P. And as we can see, the temperature of the rod increases as a function of time and the relation is given to us. So they have finally asked us the heat capacity of the metal. Okay, so let's say at some general time, the temperature of the rod is T. And let's say if I want to increase the temperature of the rod by an amount of dt. So the heat that I would have to supply equals the heat capacity of the metal rod times dt. So this is the definition of the heat capacity of a metal. Okay. As energy is being supplied to the rod at a constant rate p, I can write dq as p times dt. Okay. So from here, c is going to be p divided by the time rate of change of the temperature of the rod. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can easily figure out the time rate of change of the temperature uh, by just differentiating it. There's a factor of time coming in our expression of dt over dt, which we can eliminate using our original equation. And we get this as the final answer to our problem. So, and that corresponds to option A. Okay, so uh, this is the problem from J2020. So, and this question was given as bonus. And the reason it was given bonus is because the degree of freedom of the gas was not given to us which we need if you want to solve this problem so the answer will vary depending upon the gas is monoatomic diatomic and so okay so we'll just take the degree of freedom of the gas as f and solve this problem okay so the question states that we have a thermally isolated cylindrical closed vessel whose height is eight meter and it is kept vertically so what thermally isolated cylinder means means is that there is no heat transfer or mass transfer to and from the cylinder to its surroundings okay so so basically there is no heat coming into the cylinder and also there is no heat going out of the cylinder and as it is closed we know that the mass of the contents present within it cannot escape okay so now the next line said that it is divided into two equal parts so four meter four meter by a diathermic or a perfect thermal conductor frictionless partition of mass 8.3 kg so this is the partition that they're talking about and it is given to be a perfect thermal conductor okay we'll discuss what that means in a bit and it has a mass of 8.3 kg and moves without friction thus the partition is held initially at a distance of four meter from the top as shown in the figure now each of the two parts in the vessel contains 0.1 mole of an ideal gas at temperature of 300 kelvin so they contain equal amounts of gas and their temperature is initially constant the partition is now released and it moves without any gas leaking from one part of the vessel to the other. Now they are stating in the problem that finally equilibrium is reached meaning thermal and mechanical. In that situation they are asking us about the distance, distance of the partition from the top. Okay, so now let's begin with the analysis. So initially guys, if you observe the number of moles on both the chambers, the temperature of both the chambers and the volume of both the chambers are equal, right? So if, so as two states, that is temperature and volume is, is same, then pressure will also be same. So initially the gas pressure above and gas pressure below is the same. In the FBD of the piston, there will be Mg acting downwards, the gas pressure from below and the gas pressure from above right into a so this is the fbd of the piston initially the net force applied by the gas is zero so there is a downward force of mg acting on the piston uh, which accelerates our piston in the downward direction and as a result the gas below it compresses and the gas above it expands so the pressure above will decrease and the pressure below will increase and, and at some point the net force will be will become equal this is uh, at this particular point the piston wouldn't stop right because it will have some velocity v as as it was accelerating for this whole time so it will go even further down and then it will come back up so as we as you can kind of get a feel this piston would actually perform oscillatory motion initially but in the problem they, st they stated specifically that finally the piston reaches equilibrium and this essentially means that uh, the kinetic energy of the piston at the end be zero so the thing is essentially the oscillatory motion uh, that this piston undergoes is a damped one so the basically the piston over here it performs damped oscillations meaning its amplitude of oscillation uh, it decreases with time and and finally it will come to rest okay so let's say in the final situation the piston moves down 
by an amount of x relative to the original position and let's call the initial height as l0 so let's say the uh, pressure from the gas below is p1 so the force applied by it will be p1a force supplied by the gas above is p2 into a and there will be a force of mg also acting on the piston now in the final state uh, as the rod as the piston is in mechanical equilibrium i can balance the forces so i can say p1 has to be equal to p2 plus mg divided by the area of cross section okay now guys this piston over here it is also given to be a perfect conductor which means the temperature of the gas above is the same as the temperature of the gas below and why is that because let's say the temperature of the gas above was t1 and the temperature of the gas below was t2 uh, in that case what will happen is heat, there will be heat transfer from the section above to the section below depending upon who has higher temperature so let's assume t1 is greater than t2 so there will be heat transfer from the upper section to the lower section till the temperature difference become equal so and therefore the temperature in the final states of the gas above and the gas below are the same so we can write down t1 equal to t2 so now the thing is we can write p as nrt by v so p1 i can write it as nr t1 which i which i'm going to call it as t let's say divided by v1 so if you observe the final volume of the gas is going to be so initial height was l0 and finally the height of the column is l0 minus x so the final volume is going to be l0 minus x multiplied by the area and this would be equal to p2 which is nrt divided by the final volume is going to be l0 plus x into a uh, plus mg divided by a so this is the final force balance equation that we have so here the unknowns that we are we are left with is the temperature final temperature of both the sections and the distance x which we have to figure out so now where do we get the other equation from and we have used force balance so now we have so now we have to obtain the other equation from by observing the energy changes so okay guys so now what i'm going to do is consider the entire cylinder as a system so if i consider the entire cylinder as a system this is clearly mentioned in the qu question that this is a thermodynamically isolated system meaning there is no heat entering the cylinder or there is no heat leaving the cylinder basically there is no heat transfer to the surroundings so the net heat transfer from the cylinder to the surroundings is actually zero in this case and also there is no boundary work being done on the system right there, there is no heater attached to the system which is providing it electrical energy or there is no shaft ex external shaft that is providing some work and there is also no mechanical work or basically pdv work at the boundaries right the boundaries of the cylinder is fixed and it's not moving right so the thing is we can say that there is no heat transfer to the cylinder there is also no work done on the cylinder and we know that the delta e or basically the change in energy change in total energy of a system we can easily write it as the energy in minus the energy out so if there is more energy coming into the system in the form of heat and work as compared to the energy leaving out then the then the total energy of the system will increase right so in this case there is no energy coming in and there is no energy going out so the change in energy of the system should be zero so, and the total energy we know it consists of the kinetic energy of the system the potential energy of the system and the internal energy of the system so for the entire cylinder i can write delta k plus delta p plus delta u it should always be equal to throughout the process it should be equal to zero so essentially so the simple idea is that there is no energy coming in or going out which basically means the energy content present within the cylinder must be constant with respect to time okay and so we know that the delta ke of the system is simply zero because and we are and here we don't include the kinetic energy of the gas particles guys because that is involved over here or we involve the energy associated with the motion of gas particles in the internal energy term we don't include it in the delta ke term so delta ke term would include basically the kinetic energy of this piston over here which we know that in the initial state and the final state it comes to rest so the delta ke is simply zero now the potential energy uh, of the system is actually changing so we, we can see that the gravitational potential energy of the rod is decreasing so the potential energy of the system it decreases uh, which essentially means the internal energy of the gas or the temperature of the gas it has to increase uh, so basically finally T would be greater than the original temperature which was 300 Kelvin. So the decrease in gravitational potential energy is mgx because the mass went down by an amount of x and this would be equal to the increase in internal energy of the gas. So the increase in internal energy of the gas is nothing but f by 2 nr delta T right and uh, here if you observe something initial temperature of both the gases is 300 Kelvin and final temperature is T. So the delta T in both of the cases is the same and it's also given in the problem that the ideal gas present in both the containers are the same. If 
if uh, I consider the degree of freedom of one gas to be F, the degree of freedom of the other gas is also F. So I can write the internal energy collectively as F by 2. In the moles part, I'll, inclu I'll include the total moles, which is 2N uh, times R times delta T. And delta T is nothing but T minus 300. So and here N is given to be 0 0.1 moles. So now as you can see, we have two equations relating X and T. So we can now solve for X which we want. You can also solve for t, which, which is not asked in the problem, but you can definitely do so. So once you solve both of the equations, you'll obtain a quadratic in x. And, so, and now, f, uh, as you can see, for further solving, we need the value of f. If I consider the gas to be monoatomic, then I can take the value of f to be 3, right? So the degree of freedom in the case of a monoatomic gas, it's 3. And if I solve it for that, I'll get the x value. I'll get the distance moved by the piston as 1.88 meters. So now in the problem, what they asked was, what was the final distance of the piston from the top? And that distance D would be the L naught plus X, which is four plus 1.88, which comes out to be around 5.88 meters. So this would be the final answer for this question. So the main concept here was that the total energy contents of the system must remain constant. And so, and whatever processes are happening inside, finally, when everything comes to rest, the delta P plus delta U must remain, must be equal to zero. So that was the main concept. So now I'll show you guys the homework problem. So this is the problem. So, so I'll explain the problem to you guys. So we have a gas whose degree of freedom is F and it is present in a thermally insulated vessel, similar to the last problem. And the vessel has two large pistons, each having a charge of plus Q and minus Q. So you can model this as infinite, as an infinitely large conducting plane. Okay. So, Assume charges are uniformly distributed. Pistons can move without friction inside the vessel. At an instant, the charge on the piston is increased k times with the help of the external agent. So, so this line here is important, guys. So, so basically what the external agent did is that he kept the relative position of these two plates fixed. That is this distance L0 is fixed, right? So, and then he increased the magnitude of charges on both sides by Q. So, and this was done at an instant as as you can see in the question. So basically this was state one. The Then the agent did some work and instantaneously made the charges on them, KQ and minus KQ. And now after this, the internal processes will happen. Like the plates are going to attract each other with a much larger force and the gas is going to be compressed. And then you can use the idea that we used in the previous question. So that was the hint for this question. So you can try this problem out. And if you couldn't solve it, I'll help you out in the comments. So yeah. So that was it for this video guys. If you if you enjoyed the video please do like, share and subscribe and that's it. Thanks for watching.